It is the grandest river of Southeast Asia, the mighty Mekong. And by the time it's tumbled down from the highlands of Tibet, it's become one of the world's most untamed rivers, uniting the three countries of Indochina, Laos, Cambodia and Vietnam. It's our intention now to travel right through the heart of these unique territories, discovering some intriguing mysteries and learning more about some very strong cultures that are flourishing once more after being devastated by war. From the Golden Triangle, our plan is to travel down the Mekong River and its hinterland, through the heart of Laos and into Vietnam, exploring south into the Mekong Delta before looping back into Cambodia to find evidence of an all-conquering empire. Along the way, we'll observe the primitive ceremonies of remote hill tribes, wander through fields of mysterious giant jars, and take part in the biggest festival ever staged on the Mekong. We'll learn more about the woman who could have been queen and share the vision of the Khmer rulers who created the world's largest sacred site. From the tunnels of the Viet Cong, to a church service that observes the best of all major religions. We'll discover the sheer joy of a people whose future is looking much brighter. Join us now as we explore a land of many mysteries, the majestic Mekong. The notorious Golden Triangle that links Thailand, Burma and Laos is our launching point for a fast boat ride down the Mekong River. Opium is still widely grown and used by the hill tribes here, as we're about to discover. One main attraction is there's over 48 different ethnic groups in Laos, and uh, most of them live exactly as they have for centuries. John Marquis of the region's small group journey specialists Travel Indochina is taking us on an expedition through territory he spent much of his adult life exploring. The Mekong really is the lifeline of this country. It travels over 1,500 kilometres, and it's where most of the, uh, the different ethnic groups live, and we'll see a, a great variety on this trip. Our first encounters along the banks of the Mekong are with Laotians who have had little or no contact with foreigners. Laos has been a closed country until only a few years ago, the political consequence of the war back in the 60s and 70s with America. Years of virtual isolation have left Laos as a real Asian backwater. Even the boats we pass are aging relics. This one is from neighboring China. Even canoes like this have freeboard so minuscule they could easily turn over in the turbulent waters of the Mekong. There's no choice here though, roads are non-existent. Coming ashore, we set out to investigate what occasion has prompted villagers from this hill tribe to wear their most elaborate headgear. Hello. 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 They're from the Hmong ethnic group, the largest in Laos. As I discover, they're just as curious about me and my video camera as I am about them.
I've met them on their way to a funeral, that of a 60-year-old village elder who died the day before. To reach the elders' village, they'll cross the treacherous Mekong by canoe. There are no bridges here. In the small Hmong village of Ban Lam Ten, the men bow deeply, paying their respects to the dead man's family. These Hmong are animists, meaning they worship the natural elements. This ceremony actually goes for two days. So inside we have the, the body and, uh, and the family. A sombre ritual is underway, centred around the dead man's body. Caring for him and stroking his head is his wife. These strips of paper hanging from the rafters are meant to act as a protective purifying barrier between the body and any bad spirits. Now this music we're hearing has been going on for some time. Obviously uh, a crude drum here and the other instrument? It's called a ken and it's a, a or a, the literal translation is flute. Uh, so it's a bamboo flute with five or six pipes that, that make a different sound depending on the length. And this ceremony playing the gong is the drum and the ken, the flute will go uh, for two complete days, 48 hours. Sharing food with the family is part of this ceremony of farewell. Smoked pigs and chickens are offered, while the mourners engage in a peaceful vigil. The sound of that ringing and chanting over here would indicate that somebody is sick. We're told that it's a young mother who's contracted malaria and that a shaman and his team is now in operation. <laughs> to fight off the evil spirits that have infected the woman, the shaman engages in a highly energetic ritual that will last the next three hours. He's dosed himself up heavily on opium to cast out the demons. The small shrine and fire and even the black cloth that covers his face are all intended to shun the evil spirits that have infected the young malaria-ridden mother.